But I want to talk about a cleanse real quick. Um, the conversation of a cleanse is a whole other workshop, which we will do, and Kristen will be a part of it. In I'm not, I, I have the dates, I can't remember whether it's March or April, but we'll do that coming up. Because it's good, and cleansing is really popular, but I just wanted to at least touch on it so you know and understand how it fits into this whole thing. Here's the thing is if you're feeling, and this isn't supposed to be an adrenal fatigue workshop because we're going to do that as well, but if you are feeling fatigued and tired, the cleanse is probably not the best thing to do. It's for someone who is relatively healthy, at least, and says I need to reset my body to be able to really clean it out and then get even better. So if you're tired and fatigued, the cleanse isn't the right direction. The first would be to address the hormonal imbalance, and then after that, once you get that where it's leveled, then to hit a cleanse, because the cleanses can be tough on your body, especially most of them that are on the market, which I'm gonna talk about, and I'm not gonna pick any by name. I did have a, um, a podcast or whatever about like the top 10 ones that are out there on the web, and talked about how, which ones I recommended, which ones I didn't, and which, what, why that is. But a cleanse is, um, cleans your gut, your liver, kidneys, and colon. We're talking about the colon real quick. Um, colon enemas, or people that do certain things to like clean out their colon, don't ever do that. You, don't, you want your body to naturally clean it, so it's kind of like your um, thing that goes automatically in the bottom of your pool, just let it do its own work by giving it the right things and taking away some things that allows your body to regenerate. So people think that I'm just gonna blow my colon, right? And I'm gonna get rid of all, everything. Well, you get rid of all the good bacteria along with the bad bacteria and you get rid of everything and then you gotta start from scratch and rebuild it, you don't wanna do that. Your body is, a really, has, is very good at naturally going through and picking out the bad stuff and putting in the good stuff. So just so you know with that. So your gut is obviously your lining. You wanna make sure those cells are brought back together because one of the biggest problems in gut dishealth or, or disease is having space between that. <clears throat> a lot of reasons it happens, a lot of ways to fix it. A lot of the ways to fix it are what we've already talked about. And then the colon too. And then the liver just gets overwhelmed with all the toxins that we get. And so then because of that, there's a lot of fat or buildup in the fat tissue mainly with a lot of the heavy metals that we get just by living in our environment. And so when we get too much of that, a cleanse can regenerate that. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this. So there's the heavy metals, regenerates tissue. Okay, so it takes 20 to 30 days to regenerate your tissue, your colon, uh, specifically your gastric cells. So know that because when you're looking at a cleanse, which is super popular, a lot of them are three or four or five day cleanses, it's not long enough. Not that that's bad in itself. It's not really bad, you can do that, and if it makes you feel a little bit better, but it's not gonna do the job to regenerate the cells that you need to, to really reset it. So if you're gonna do a cleanse, it's gotta be longer. Um, four to six weeks, most cleanses are too short. Most cleanses are high in sugar. So here's the thing is most of the cleanses that are out there on the market are very high in sugar because they can sell the juice and sell the products. And they're also low in healthy fats, and here's the one, one thing too, they're gonna to be real high in fiber because that sells. In other words, they can say high fiber, cleans out your colon. For that reason we just talked about with the colon, you don't want to, and 40 grams a day in general is enough. So fiber was all the talk and the rage, and still is, but 10 or 20, 30 years ago, whatever, and we learned eat more fiber, eat more fiber, and then of course as we do, we take it to the extreme, we get all the fiber we can, and then we realize we have diverticulitis and gastric bleeding and problems, and that's people who really overdo it. So 40 grams, so if you're looking at a cleanse, 40 grams is enough for that. And then most are really low in calories, why? So that you can tell your friends, oh my gosh, I lost 10 pounds in a week, which you can do, and that'll be the claims, and a lot of times you can, but you're losing muscle and you're losing water, and I think you know that. So a lot of them are super low in calories, and the one that I recommend doesn't have to be that. So what happens when you are too low in calories, you lose muscle, and then over a period of time, when you do that for too long, you have neural degradation, which is obviously a problem. So, the best cleanse, best, best commercial cleanse, if you're gonna look at one, and we'll do a cleanse here, and I will show you in way more detail how to do it all yourself so you don't have to buy a program or buy a product, but this guy's awesome. He was a medical doctor, I forget where, he was over in Europe somewhere. Do you know him, Kristen? He, yeah, I mean, his books are, and then he decided to take a sabbatical for six months to go to India, and I think he stayed there for like 10 years to really learn um, medicine and the research that has never come to America. And he was astounded that all the things that we're battling over have already been figured out down there in so many ways. So he was like, here's all the research that's been done around the world that just hasn't gotten to America for whatever reason. He named a bunch of different reasons. So good doctor, really good program of what he is. So his is 1,500 calories a day, which is what you want. You don't want to go too low because here's the thing is cleansing by itself is tough on your body, which is why you don't want to do it if you have adrenal fatigue because it can make it worse. 
So you, by itself, it's tough because you're taking a lot of things and making your body now start to work and regenerate. So 1,500 calories a day, you don't want to go lower than that because then your body works hard and then it can kick back and go against it. His is three weeks long. And his is really a gut cleanse. And he'll t he talks about it. He has a whole book on the gut. It's really fascinating. It's meant to clean up the bad bacteria and rebuild good, like we said. All right, so I'm jumping, jumping kind of here. So you can do it yourself for $140 a month. So if you ever look at a cleanse and it's, they're anywhere between four and $1,000 for the program, whether it's a week or two or three or five days, they're very expensive, but you buy their foods. Most of the time it's a juice cleanse, that's what's popular. But you're gonna spend a lot of money and you don't need to do that. You can do it on your own. And like I said, in the cleanse program, we'll, we'll go through all that with you. Oop, oh, I have that out of order. Um, again, same as we've talked about, is with a cleanse, you eliminate certain things, the infl inflammatory foods, the wheat, dairy, soy. We haven't really talked about soy. We'll do it another time. And then eggs. And there's a few things you take out that normally, like I think a little later today, I'm going to say, get plenty of eggs in your diet. But then if you're trying to reset or cleanse or balance, rebalance your hormone and you're stuck, then we can take out eggs for a little bit because a lot of people, that's an allergen. Um, there's two. If you're going to buy a diet book, I want to put these in there. If you're going to buy, ever buy two diet books, the ones that are out now are the Paleo Autoimmune Diet. And the thing is, is I was watching a, a, a video on paleo, and I wouldn't say that I'm that or that I preach that. It's just that, and this lady said, and it's Amy Myers from Austin, who's awesome. Have you heard of her before? Great, yeah. Um, she said, look, paleo isn't a fad. It's been around for thousands and thousands of years. So really, is really the way we eat in America now is the fad, and this is just going back to our roots. So, Really great book that if you're going to go through a cleanse or you're going to go through a reset, that's right on. And then the specific carbohydrate diet, and I have the website in there. You can look that up if you want to. So if you're looking for something and going, I want more, I want to read more, I want more recipes, I want more ideas, those two books are great. Um, supplements are important in that, which Kristen's going to cover, not cleanse supplements. Um, but, but the supplements that are important, here's what they are, and I'm not going to go into these now, but a good probiotic. And digestive enzymes, which helps regenerate. What digestive enzymes do is it helps your body start to create more of the enzymes that it was that it stopped making for a number of reasons. Oil of oregano, um, it's an antibacterial, which you don't take at the same time as a probiotic. Activated charcoal, does anyone take that? I have a little bit of that in my travel bag, because if you ever get in a poison or there's something, that's a binder, it's one of the best binders out there. And it doesn't, it's not like a briquette from your grill, it isn't, but it actually is that in a pill. But it's like the best binder and so when you're going on a cleanse, you want to start, the stuff's starting to be released from your body, so it binds it and it gets rid of it. So you actually take charcoal. And then antioxidant, and then lighter, lighter exercise. Okay. I'm kind of done with the stuff that I want to talk about, but I'm going to go through eight superfoods that I think, and you see lists all the time of the great superfoods, and you see the normal things over and over and over, and you kind of look at that and say, well, what do I do with those, and how do I? These are the foods that I learned on, during my time for adrenal fatigue that I started eating a lot of, and a lot of these are kind of crazy, but they work. Organic eggs with the yolk, so that's normal. And don't ever skip the yolk. The yolk is so important. It's so healthy for you and so good for you, and there's nothing wrong with the yolks. Regardless of what you heard, no egg whites and no eggs in a carton. The yolk has so much good stuff for you. So you get an organic, grass-fed, preferably good egg that's the best for you. Sea vegetables. We don't talk about that much, but here's what they are. is nori, kelp. Dulce algae, spirulina, chlorella, the amount of nutrients, and you can almost get all of your nutrients that you could possibly need in those things. So they're a little harder to eat, but you can get those, and there's a lot of different recipes and things you can have. So I will typically, my kids love them, too, is the, the um, seaweed sheets, so the algae sheets. And, and you, you can just buy those for like sushi. Wrap your eggs in them, you can use those as a wrap. Now they're a little bit tougher, but they're so healthy for you. So when we say the fish are healthy, well, fish are healthy because of these. And that's where it comes from. So you can eat fish, but you actually get more than you get from fish in these. So really, really good, good stuff. Organ meats. All right. So that is like everything that we normally don't eat. Fascinating book. And in fact, it's written up a lot of times. But it wasn't that long ago that people, when they would go kill a deer or kill a buffalo or a cow, they would use the entire animal from start to finish. They would everything. So their skin, they would use that for bags or clothing or whatever. But they would eat everything. So, and that's one of the reasons is the organ meat is so healthy for you. And so the three kind of main ones, well liver, does anyone love liver in here? Okay, so I don't either. Liver worst is like the next worst. And then brown schwager is like for chickens, which is what I'll eat. 
So it has liver in it, but it mixes a little bit of bacon in there and it mixes, what was the other thing, some oil or something. So it tastes, actually, that's really good, I think. So whenever you can or want to, um, I, I try to get that at least once or twice a week just for the nutrients that are in there. Huge amount of nutrients in the organ meats, way more than in the beef that we eat. I'll tell you some crazy stuff. Bone broth. Um, I will make that occasionally, or I'll get the really healthy bone broth and then use that in as many things as I can, but never um, a commercially purchased one. So I say I buy it, but I buy it from a company that is it's very good. But never commercially purchased brand. I'll either make my own or whatever, because bone broth is, um, make your own chicken broth. It heals your digestive system, which is where, where your entire immune system starts from. Um, decreases joint pain, because we're getting that, what's, what's holding that chicken together, the marrow, you're getting that into your diet, which is important, and then also improve sleep. So bone broth is really healthy, good stuff. Shellfish, I, I eat either oysters or mussels probably once a week. Mussels are a little bit easier. You just buy the bag, drop it in the water. If you need a recipe for that, let me know. I mean, I've like created this, figured out a perfection, but um, mussels, just take the bag, drop it in water for, or drop it in your, whatever your sauce is you're cooking for like five minutes and it's ready to go. So it's really, um, Super, super healthy for you. A lot of vitamins that's harder to get. You can get your entire week's supply of a lot of the different vitamins just in a serving of mussels. And oysters are even a little bit more. Natto, anyone ever had natto before? It's fermented soybeans and it makes it so it's like this gooey, like when you take it, you'll have strings of the fermented goo or whatever. So it, it is definitely an acquired taste, but a huge, a really high supply of vitamin K2, which is hard to get otherwise. So natto is really good, and you can make your own, or you can go to, I don't know if they have that in the grocery store. I, I usually will go to the Asian store up by Tractor Supply and get it there. And then it's kind of one of those things that I'll just eat along with eggs or something. Very, really, really healthy to get. Dark colored fruits and vegetables, you know that. And then other fermented foods, natto is one of them. Natto, kimchi, does anyone ever eat that? It's fermented, ca fermented cabbage, cabbage. It's again an acquired taste, but kefir which is similar to yogurt, but it's fermented, so it has, these are all things that have a lot of good bacteria in it. Pickles, chow and pickles, and yogurt is in there, sauerkraut, kombucha, anyone drink that? You could do like a whole day on just kombucha, because it's pretty good. If you can make your own, it's better. Just be careful of the commercially ones, because it shouldn't have sugar in it, because then when they make kombucha, you have tea, and you put in like two cups of sugar, or four cups of sugar, depending on your batch, and then you put in the, the um, live culture, and then within a day, the sugar's all gone because the bacteria ate it. So you're getting good bacteria, and is really good, too. And then dark chocolate, like the real dark chocolate. So there's some really, really good foods if you're, um, and I actually eat most of those a lot of the time. Okay, this is, this is Kristen. So Kristen is one of our yoga instructors, as probably a lot of you know. And I would say when it comes to supplements and herbs, she is an incredible wealth of knowledge. Like literally right now, if I had a question about supplements, out of anyone in the world, she's who I'd go to. So, no, it's true. <laughs> and she, and I told her, she, she does have her own company. And so, um, she'll talk about some of her own products and that's, that's fine, so. Yeah, I'm not really about a bunch of my own, but I, I do different cards to get the questions. I always contact you. Um, I do, and I go to instructor here. Um, Body. And also a professor for Catholic University, and I teach classes for them on health and wellness. And so I talk about herbs and supplements, and diet, nutrition, and alternative medicine, and this idea, especially of hormones, uh, rebalancing the hormones, comes up a lot. Um, and a lot of my students just are always asking me why. Why does it matter? And we have to explain, but why does it matter that we actually balance the hormones out? Well, these are the little. Hormones of the body are little chemical messengers, right? They're going through the body, they're traveling through the bloodstream, through our tissues, through our organs, and they're affecting everything from growth and metabolism, um, they're affecting sleep, reproduction, all that good stuff, right? So it's important to kind of keep them at the steady level so that you don't have um, it fluctuating so much where it can throw these things out of whack. Um, they're constantly in flux, they're going to be in flux anyways, but if they're consistently out of balance, and it can really lead to some issues, thyroid issues, adrenal fatigue, um, sleep, insomnia, low energy, right? It's important to try to keep the levels pretty even, or at least work to get to that, that level. Um, and there's really no one-size-fits-all model to get everybody on the kind of same level. Um, 
So it's important to work either with an individual or in a group. So I love the idea of that adrenal fatigue um, workshop that you guys are going to do because they can really target what's realistic for you because that's one of the most important things. When you're working with holistic health, you have to make it easy for yourself. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to happen, right? So I put out a few different supplements here. And let's see. There we go. And I try to keep it pretty short. Um, I'm going to start with the supplements first um, because most of you are probably familiar with these anyways. Maybe we're already taking these. Um, these are the things I start looking at in my clients right away when I'm working to rebalance hormones. So things like magnesium supports hundreds of reactions in the body. Right? Really important to make sure you have the right magnesium levels. Um, and it, magnesium is really great also to um, help sleep, right? Support your sleep cycles, which is essential for your hormone levels. If you have a lot of insomnia and you're not sleeping well, your hormone levels are going to be all out of whack because it's at night when we start to rebuild and we start releasing and we can keep everything level. So looking at magnesium levels is really important. Um, generally, the recommended, recommended dose is 300 to 350 milligrams a day. Um, I like to get through food sources. I have to say that food sources is really the best way to get your nutrients if you can. But again, you have to be realistic. <laughs> so if it's not realistic for you to eat, you know, a big kale salad every day, or you're traveling and you're dying, you know your diet's not going to be what it usually is, then having a good magnesium supplement is really important. It's also in seeds and nuts, and fish, avocados, bananas, dark chocolate. So that's good news for everybody, right? There's benefits to dark chocolate um, and yogurt as well, right? So making sure you have those good magnesium levels is important. And you can lots of different ways to check your magnesium levels. You can do a food diary. If you guys have already been doing that. Um, you can also um, get your levels tested as well. Make sure that they're all um, that they're all up there at least at 350 milligrams a day. Um, also, vitamin D, uh, D3 is really the active D that you want to get in your diet. I'm not going to talk a lot about vitamin D because there's tons of research on it. You guys have probably heard all the things about vitamin D, and it is. It's a great vitamin. It's in all those good organ meats that um, that Cook was just talking about. Um, but if you don't like the organ meats, then you can always get it through sunshine, right? It's also um, recommended dosage is 800 to 1,000 IUs. It's also in those egg yolks and cheeses and in smaller amounts, but it's a really a great source of mushrooms. So if you can find a good mushroom that's palatable to you and you start incorporating that in your diet, reishi or maitake, you know, they can be amazing for novellas. Um, Start playing with mushrooms a little bit because there's some really good sources of D3 in there, especially. Um, and so that's why it would be great pre hormone support of all those hormone functions. Um, you can also get that last one there's cod liver oil. Has anybody actually taken cod liver oil before? No? <laughs> it sounds kind of like, yes? <laughs> was it recently or was it back in the day? It was back in the day. Yeah, so I always I'm get it. Right, and the, the face is like this, like yeah. cod liver oil. We're not going to take that. But there's actually a lot of supplements in cod liver oil now that are um, flavored. So they're much more palatable. Um, so it's a little bit better. And they're a really great source of those omega-3 fatty acids, which is also really important that you get in your diet. Um, the omega-3s are essential because they create healthy cell membranes. Right? And we want those healthy cell membranes so the hormones they can reach their destinations more easily. Um, they can help in maintain the repair of the hormone receptor sites. So not only can we get there, but they can stay there, right? So making sure you have those good um, membranes for the cells is important. And really good sources, again, is cod liver oil, fish oil, essentially, right? But um, with fish oil, um, it's really important to remember that you need a quality fish oil. They can have really high levels of mercury if you're taking a supplement. So you want to make sure when you're looking at the bottle, um, that it says something like um, tested for heavy metals, right? Or maybe uh, filtered free of environmental pollutants. Um, it's one of the most important supplements that you make sure it's a quality product, in my opinion. So you want to make sure that you're not harming yourself when you're trying to be healthy. Um, also, uh, recommended dosage 500 milligrams a day. Food sources fish, nuts, eggs, leafy greens, whole grains, too, really important. 
So a lot of those resources here. And again, try to think of those first before you go around and you know, spend much money on supplements. Try to think about starting to get it into your food first. All those nutrient interactions are so important. And when you just isolate that one little vitamin, that's great, but you might not be assimilating it as effectively as you could if you were trying to get it through your food. All right. So I had a little less uh, success keeping my herbs synced because I love herbs. So I have a lot of these. But let's start with this. Ashwagandha. Has anybody had this, heard of it? Ashwagandha? Good. How do you take it? Um, actually, I know a lady that did a Ayurvedic, I mean, uh -huh. Yeah. had plans with me and she made yeah. a herb like that I mixed with water and yeah. she did, like, drank it like a shot. Awesome. It was very Happy to taste. It's great. It's going to taste. Yeah, ashwagandha is one, it's really a primary irrigated herb. Um, it's used a lot. It helps um, with adrenal fatigue especially. It's an adaptogen, um, which is basically a substance that helps balance out the hormone excesses or deficits by boosting the efficiency of the sites, again, where the hormones bind. So the same with omega-3s, right? They want to get those good receptor sites so the hormones can bind with them and stick around and not be fluctuating all over the place. Um, and in Ayurvedic medicine, it's primarily used with adrenal fatigue and thyroid issues. Also, um, you know, helps the body cope with stress. I use this a lot with my menopausal women. Um, really great herb to help with hot flashes, keep everything level, help with the mood swings, right? My mom is very grateful for this herb. It's uh, 600 milligrams per day is a recommended dosage. And you can find these in the store in capsule form, powdered capsules. You don't have to make a gross water mixture. <laughs> but it's, I personally, personally, I find that um, you know some people just have different absorptions. They're better absorbed, and some people it's harder to break down than others. You get digestive stuff going on. So I like the water extract. So I'll often, if I'm making this for a client, I will make a decoction, which is like a really strong tea. Or I make an alcohol extract where I steep the herb for six weeks or so, get pulling out those medicinal constituents, and then it's it's really easy, right? You don't just sit there and make tea or taste anything that grows. You can take it really easily. And alcohol extracts are good because they go right in the bloodstream, so they are pretty fast acting. That's ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a good one. Another one is aging ginseng. Um, this one's great. It helps alleviate. A variety of symptoms, particularly that kind of fuzzy feeling. You just, you can't remember quite what is going on. You went into here, you can't remember what you were getting, and now you know that fuzzy feeling. This is a great herb for that. It really can help clear the mind. Um, and it um, can also kind of cool hot tempers, lower immunity when you're really stressed out, really kind of um, stretching it thin and you tend to get sick a lot, ginseng is really great. This is used a lot in traditional Chinese medicine. It's a good cheat on it. So it's said to build up that kind of internal fire, get everything going again so that you can um, so you can really be effective, right? And um, and and um, yeah, recommended dosage 200 400 milligrams per day. Uh, so it's four percent uh, geneticized. You'll see that on the bottle if you're looking at it. Okay, um, and you know a lot of these words, you know, a lot of the names. I know that they're a little bit uh, unfamiliar, but once you start using them, and you'll start hearing more about them, you know, as you get more and more familiar with them. So this one's Don Kwai. Anybody have experience with this one? Don Kwai, Liz, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tea, tea, the tea. How did it taste? Good. Yeah, yeah, it's almost yeah. like a licorice -y, yes. it's kind of yes. sweet. Mm -hmm. It's it a replacement of chocolate for me. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> if I get a sweet craving, I can have it in. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's another great herb. It's again used in traditional Chinese medicine a lot. This one helps uh, balance estrogen levels that are too high or too low. And another adaptogenic herb in Western herbalism, it's called nervines. So it helps support the nervous system. Um, and it can also help hot flashes, PMS, all that good stuff. You see the dosage is 150 to 3 milligrams per day. Again, you can get it in capsule form. Is that what yours is, capsule form? Or do you no, know it's form? just in the teas. Uh, teas. Yeah. yeah, or tea form. Um, and they, 
have a lot of these herbs at um, Brazos Natural Foods. I know that they have a lot of these in bulk. Um, if you actually want to see what the actual herb looks like and not just the capsule where it's powdered, it's always kind of an interesting field trip. Um, another one is rhodiola. Rhodiola is a really great herb adap adaptogen again. It's a subject of a, a lot of studies in the past, I don't know, 20 years or so. There's a ton of work out there on rhodiola, and specifically it's used to increase thyroid function. There's a lot of people with thyroid issues these days, and no matter what we attribute it to, um, there's something going on. And so we've been looking at ways to help increase the thyroid function, help with that adrenal fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome as well. Rhodiola is a great one. It also boosts um, brain function, lifts your mood, right? It's a really good um, herb to help balance that out. 100 milligrams a day, standardized form, if you're taking it in that capsule form. Um, and last but not least is Vitex. This one you might have heard, it's called uh, Chastaberry. Um, this one is a great herb because it regulates that hormone balance, menstrual cycle, normalizes estrogen, along with progesterone as well. And um, it also is really good for skin issues. So often when the hormones get out of balance, right, it's not just mood swing, it's not just <coughs> weight gain, they don't know where it's coming from, but you get these skin issues that happen too. Vitex is a really good one, so it'll help kind of even everything out if you clear up the skin pretty quickly. And you'll find that with a lot of these herbs is that they tend to work pretty quickly um, as far as balancing the hormone levels out. If you can follow a regimen for about 10 days, you should see, you should feel results in about 10 days. And I mean, that can be cured, it's not gonna be perfect because hormone levels are always gonna go up and down, but you should actually feel, um, you should actually have a little bit of a, of a result there. All right, so you've got all your good herbs, you've got all your good supplements, or you think you do, but when you go to the store, it's really hard to know what is a good supplement. I always see this. I go in the supplement aisle in HEB over there, the supplement aisle is right by the bulk food section, and I just see people like with this glazed look on their face. What am I supposed to be buying? Because there's so many choices out there. You know the names of them, but now you're gonna go to the store and you're gonna look and there's supplements that are $50, and there's supplements that are $10, and you don't really know how to tell which is a good quality supplement. It's really important to do your research. It sounds like common sense, but it really is. Do your homework before you go to the store so you don't make an impulse buy or drive yourself crazy. Um, the FDA treats supplements as foods rather than medicines. So what that means is that it's up to the supplement manufacturers to determine if it's safe and if it's effective. There's not a lot of regulation with supplements. If there's an adverse effect, and someone reports it to the FDA, then the FDA can step in and pull it off the shelf. But before that, I mean, you, anybody can put anything up there, essentially. So you really want to make sure that you do your research and find a good quality brand. And, and that's really the best advice I have for you on that level is find a good brand and stick with it. Two, three good brands and stick with them. So to find those good brands, you want to look at the bottle, you want to do some online research, um, one of the biggest red flags for me is that they're making all these crazy claims. The supplement's gonna help you lose weight in three days and keep it off, and it's gonna do your laundry, and it's going to babysit your kids. I mean, they make all sorts of claims, right? Not to that level, but when you have that, um, that's an immediate red flag. I would put that bottle down and just slowly back away, because there's no point in, if it's a quality supplement, then they don't need to market to you that way. That product will speak for itself. So if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. We also want to look for this, the manufacturing processes. So this, is, again, this is not required by supplement manufacturers to go through this process. It's called GMPs. Um, essentially, where the manufacturer has a third party come in and look over the the uh, operation and make sure that there's uh, quality control procedures for the holding, the packing. They make sure that what's actually in the supplement is actually in the supplement. Um, it's not required, so not all supplement manufacturers do this, but the ones that do do it, they market that because it costs money to do that, right? To have somebody else come in and determine whether it's safe 
and whether it's a quality product. So they put little seals on them. So the USP, United States Pharmacopoeia, so usually a little diamond seal. Um, they'll put that, that'll be a label that you can see on there, the NSF, which is the um, National Supplement Formulary. Consumer Labs is another really good one. I don't know, has anybody used Consumer Labs? It's an online resource as well. It's actually a huge database where you should be looking up all of your supplements, all of your products. You, have, you do have to pay to go on there and look up a product, but they have done all of the legwork for you there. So if you go on there and you put, you can type in your supplement name and it'll pop up at the, the rating of it, that it has, um, whether it's good, it's bad, medium quality, you know, if it actually passed certain standards. So you should look for those on the label. And there's other ones too. There's other GMP certifiers out there. But it should say GMP certified. That's a really kind of clear cut way that make sure that you have a good supplement. Um, also, whole food supplements. So, looking for supplements that are plant based rather than synthetic. So, when you look at the label, each ingredient, a little parentheses, should tell you what plant it's coming from. So, ascorbic acid from rose hips or lutein from marigolds, right? Something like that. It should tell you where ingredient is coming from. So you can trace it back. The synthetic versions can work, but they're not as assimilated into the body. Right? Again, all those interactions that you're talking about with the foods, that's why it's important to get nutrients through your foods. Same thing if you're using a whole food supplement. You can have all those nutrient interactions and it'll assimilate much, much better. So some of the brands that I like, I do not work for these people, I'm not getting paid, but these are ones that I use at home. Rainbow Light, they make a really good children's um, multivitamin, so I use that for my kids. But they have a whole range of products. Really great uh, manufacturer, Garden of Life, New Chapter. Planetary herbals I like for some of the herbal capsules. Um, I use those with my clients. Mega Foods, Nature's Plus. Um, most of these are available at HEB, like the I think the Mega Foods is available there. I've seen Rainbow Light, Garden of Life, and the Nature's Plus too. I'm not sure about the new chapter. Does anybody use any of these kinds of supplements? These particular ones? Which brand do you like? The Garden of Life. Yeah. What did you think? I like them. You like them? Yeah. It's, I mean, you want to make sure that you're actually breaking down these expensive supplements that you're taking so that you're not just wasting. You know, you're doing all this hard work, getting healthy, you know, investing in yourself, uh, make it effective, right? So just take the time to really make sure you're getting a quality, a quality uh, supplement out there. All right, guys. Any questions for me? That's all I have for you guys. Supplements? Yeah. Yeah. Was consumer seal slip? Is that like consumer reports? Like where? It's it's not the same thing, but it's similar. Yeah. Consumer labs. Yeah. So it's it's similar to consumer reports where yeah you just subscribe to the site and then search for different things, that same kind of model, but it's a, it's, it's not the same they're not related. company, yeah, they're not related, but a really great way to check if yeah. your supplements are, are good. Anybody else? Do you find those adaptogenic herbs in one pill or one mm -hmm. source? Absolutely. Yeah. And then is there any adaptogenic herbs that we want to take during this time? Um, no, I mean, the ones that you're going to find all together, those adaptogenic herbs, they're usually... Um, again, if you have a quality manufacturer and working with a company specifically that does delve into the herbals like Rainbow Light and Planetary Herbals, they're going to put the ones together that are most effective. You know, with if I always think, and actually um, I put it on my little handout, but it's really important that you guys work with uh, somebody that knows what they're doing, right? If you might be taking other medications. Right? So yeah, I mean, there could be contraindications with some of these ingredients depending on what you're taking. If you're taking a blood thinner, you don't want to take, um, you know, really dark green leafy um, supplement, for example, like something like nettle, right? Because it's, you're already on blood thinner, so it's not something that's going to have contraindication. Um, same thing with something like white willow bark. So essentially, you know, if you're on a lot of medications, then you should definitely talk to somebody that knows about interactions. But the adaptogenic herbs themselves all work pretty synergistically. Yeah. Like I make a, several different formulas, but I'll use ashwagandha, and again, they tailor to the individual, but ashwagandha and ginseng and vitex, um, and I'll often put um, a 
such as Andrew is another really good one that I didn't put in there. But there's a lot of these adaptogenic herbs can work together, and yeah, it's, it can be really effective. Yeah, and there's um, planetary herbals I know does do a specific adaptogen blend, um, and I believe New Chapter does too. Yeah. So did you say you have a store here locally? Or? I don't have a store, but I have a practice. Okay, so yeah. where is your practice? Well, right now I work out at the Rouse's Healing Center. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I do consultations out of there, and I go to people's homes and stuff and do individual um, consultations as well. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, looks like so we're going to actually finish. What kind of information do you need before you do a consultation? I, my intake form is 15 pages long. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, so I get, you know, full, you know, dietary information, health history, stuff that you might not even think about. Do you run hot? Do you run cold? You know, thinking about um, your sleep cycles, emotional patterns. Yeah, so I get a lot of, you know, you just get a lot. Most of, the more information you can get, the better you can tailor a program. Um, but I know the um, adrenal fatigue workshop that's going on, you guys have a good mm -hmm. intake form. I've seen Christine's working Yeah, and so she's going to be a part of that. And there'll be some time to do one-on-one -on -one consultations. And so we'll, and, and all these supplements we'll get as part of that workshop. So from the first day, you'll be able to start taking them and going. So it's going to be a pretty good workshop. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. So we'll wrap up this. Workshop with popcorn, which I was really happy because I know this is like contraindication having that buy back there, but it is made out of coconut oil. And that was just what, what Party Time Run to his hand on me. So, anyway, it has coconut oil, it's not that bad. So, anyway, we'll do the movie a little bit. Um, just remember to continue to mindfully eat and then keep going to your green smoothies. I mean, I missed yesterday, and I could feel it. I mean, I noticed a difference and I didn't have it. So, it's, such a, it's just the best way to get in all the stuff that we don't. And, Kristen touched on it, but I think it's, I want to say again that one of the reasons that we do supplements is because when people say, well, I really want to get it all from my foods, but do we? Probably not. And so it just fills in the gaps of what we miss when you're traveling or whatever. And so to pretend like that we always get it, we just don't. And so it's just, a, it's kind of an insurance program to know that you're getting everything that you need. It's good. All right, any other questions? I do have a question. Yeah. It's, I'm not doing this with these two weeks late necessarily a couple of plate. My question is, is how many calories am I eating? Like I just divide them when I put like a half an avocado in there. Yeah, you know, you know, you know some days you might drink a lot of it, and other days you take a few sips and just don't want more. Well, I always, what well, I've been doing is I've been using it pretty much as my breakfast at lunch. Just listen to your body. Because your body will tell you with those kind of quality foods, if your body needs it and wants it, then drink it. And if it doesn't, then you won't. You won't feel like it, so don't force it down. So if your body's saying, no, I really don't want it, just put, put it in the fridge. By the way, 48 hours in the fridge, you don't want to drink it, right? <laughs> and even 24 hours, the other day, yeah, so they don't last too long. Yeah, it just depends on how you can make it, because you can make all different kinds, right? I mean, it just depends what you put on it, put it in there. I just thought that the stuff with the green stuff is really like, it's not as sweet as it was, but I don't know. It's good. I, I was just wondering how many calories. Yeah, don't, don't even look at that because your body will tell you why. Because I notice some days that I'll just chug that thing down. Mm -hmm. and it's like a big a big cup you get the football games, so I use the football games. Yeah, that's how mine are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then other days I'll take two or three drinks and I just don't want it. And so I just put it away in the fridge and drink it later. I don't want it. Yeah. So it's listening. I have a question about supplements because um, like if I have people who just want to drink water,
I guess like a billion dollar company starting in the, like the 1930s or something. So it's an old company to start anyway, as we know about it. But grass-fed butter has, has a lot of um, vitamin K2. And I've talked about that a lot. It's just a vitamin that we don't get enough of normally as much anymore. So really important to have that. And then vitamin A too, there's a good amount of vitamin A in the grass-fed butter. So going to um, the grass-fed butters and using that. It's totally different than your commercial butter because of what they don't have in the commercial butter, simply because of what the calorie and are not even. So that um, carry gold didn't get that at all. At, at the HEVs, I know for sure. So it's really easy to find and use that. The only thing is it doesn't come in sticks, which is kind of nice to be able to cut when it says two tablespoons or a half a cup or whatever. But, um, but you get that. So yeah, that's a great source for that and really helpful. What's the name of it? Carry, carry, it's in the butter section. Just look there. It's in green tubs and it looks kind of Irish. I got one in a in a uh, stick there yeah. recently. It's unsalted, the one that I got. Oh salted. yeah, maybe yeah. so. And it has it's it's a little bit different. It's more like flat, more rectangular, but it has the. But it wasn't stick. <coughs> it wasn't a stick. Good to know. Makes me feel better. The one in the tub is softer, so if you're like spreading it on yeah. to something, yeah. it's better. That and the stick is obviously good for. Whatever, but I was telling Sandra they're they're out a lot. Yes. So when I buy, I buy like five of them and mm -hmm. put like four in the freezer and use one um, because they it just seems like they're out a lot. They do. I've noticed that too. So probably because there is about five. <laughs> 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 All right. Unless there's other questions, we'll take a break and then we'll start moving just a little bit. Can we wait till Sandra to do it?